sigmas. If you ever draw the potential energy curve of a simple harmonic oscillator, it is going to look exactly like the image that you can see on your screen. And if you are wondering how we can get this uh, energy diagram, this is known as the energy diagram of a simple harmonic oscillator, simply because uh, energy is plotted on the y-axis as a function of position. So if you are ever wondering how we can draw such energy diagrams, then I would like you to consider the example of uh, one of the best simple harmonic oscillators and also one of the toughest, which is the simple pendulum. If I displace this simple pendulum by an angle theta, that is if I give it an angular displacement and then leave it, you know what is going to happen. So if I displace this simple pendulum by an amount theta and then leave it, then what is going to do is oscillate about its equilibrium position. This point is known as the equilibrium position. Simply because uh, when the pendulum won't be oscillating, it will be at rest. At that time, it will be at its equilibrium position. Just imagine that, right? It's easy to see that when the pendulum is at rest, it is going to be hanging straight down. That is its equilibrium position. And uh, while the pendulum is oscillating, at the extreme position, these are known as extreme position. So this one and also obviously this one is known as the extreme position. And you can see that at the extreme positions, the velocity of the simple pendulum is going to be zero. And if the velocity of the simple pendulum is going to be zero at the extreme positions, that means its kinetic energy is going to be zero at the extreme positions. And what do we know about the relationship between kinetic energy, potential energy, and the total mechanical energy? Yes, we know that the total mechanical energy is the sum of the kinetic energy and potential energy. That would imply that if the kinetic energy is zero at the extreme position, its potential energy will be the maximum, which is equal to the total mechanical energy of the simple pendulum. And if that is the case for the extreme position, what would happen when the simple pendulum is passing through the equilibrium position? As the simple pendulum is passing through the equilibrium position, its uh, kinetic energy will be the maximum, which means its pot potential energy will be zero and its kinetic energy would be equal to the total mechanical energy. And that is exactly how we get that curve. Right? You can see from this curve that the energy, the potential energy of uh, the simple pendulum or any harmonic oscillator is the maximum at the extreme positions and it is a zero while the pendulum or any simple harmonic oscillator is going to pass through the equilibrium position. Now, if that is the case with the potential energy, what would the kinetic energy curve look like? Well, the kinetic energy curve is going to look something like this. Right. All you need to do is flip the potential energy curve upside down. So over here, as I told you, since uh, this is the total energy of the system, like the total mechanical energy, now none of the energy such as kinetic energy or potential energy is going to cross that total mechanical energy. So the maximum kinetic energy would be this, equal to the total mechanical energy. And that would be true when the uh, bob of the pendulum or any system that is any simple harmonic oscillator is passing through its equilibrium position, right? Its kinetic energy will be the maximum and uh, in fact equal to the mechanical energy there. And at the extreme position, that is at x1 and x2, let me use another color. So at x1 and x2, you can easily see that the kinetic energy is zero. That is at the extreme position, 
the kinetic energy of a simple harmonic oscillator would be zero. And this was the case for the simple pendulum. But in fact, we have another great example of a simple harmonic oscillator, which is the spring mass system. So if uh, this is the spring mass system and I displace this mass by some amount, right? this is a displaced mass. Okay, let me draw it in this manner. So if I displace this mass by an amount x, that is from the natural length of the spring, I am uh, going to displace it by an amount uh, x, then it will obviously execute again simple harmonic motion about that position right about its equilibrium position when the mass was at rest the and the spring had uh, its natural length that is its equilibrium position as you can easily make out that is the position that the mass will have when the spring mass uh, system is not oscillating but if i displace it and make it to oscillate again you see that at the extreme the kinetic energy is going to be zero because the velocity will be zero and hence the potential energy would be equal to the total mechanical energy. And also when the mass is uh, passing through the equilibrium position, the kinetic energy will be equal to the total mechanical energy and the potential energy would be zero. That is because when the spring has a nat its natural length, its displacement is zero, right? And that's why at that position, the potential energy is going to be zero. Now, next, what we are going to see are the bound systems. Now, what uh, are bound systems? As the name suggests, bound system means uh, in that system, two things are bound together. That is, they cannot escape each other. So, for example, in an atom, an electron is bound to the proton. And uh, even the earth is bound to the sun. This is the sun and the earth, right? So this earth is revolving around the sun and is bound to the sun. And another great example would be of a diatomic molecule. In a diatomic molecule, two atoms, let's say this is one of the atom, right, and there is another atom, these two atoms would be bound together, right? That is what a molecule is. Two atoms are bound together through some kind of bond, let's say covalent bond, or there are many such bonds, ionic bond, valence bond. Uh, so two atoms are uh, bound together by these bonds in a molecule that is also a bound system. Now, if you're wondering how can you make out whether a system is bound or not, just because two things are bound together, can we call it a bound system? Well, formally, what we would have to see is the total energy of the system. If the total energy of the system is negative, that is the total energy of the system is less than zero, then such a system is known as a bound system. And I want you to notice that the total mechanical energy can be zero if the potential energy is equal to the kinetic energy, right? And negative, then it will be zero. And uh, it would be less than zero if the potential energy is negative and greater than kinetic energy. What I mean to say is the uh, total energy is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy. And if the potential energy is negative, it would become kinetic energy minus potential energy. Now see, since uh, potential energy it depends upon position, potential energy can be negative, but kinetic energy can never be negative. That is because kinetic energy is equal to half mv squared. And here mass is always positive, obviously, and the velocity squared is always positive. The square of any number is always positive. So kinetic energy can never be negative, but the total mechanical energy can, if this negative potential energy, so minus PE is greater than K. If uh, that is true, right, if potential energy is greater than the kinetic energy, 
then the total mechanical energy will be negative and you would say that the system is bound. In fact, what if I want to, this uh, electron which is bound to the nucleus to escape the nucleus, that is from a bound system I want an unbound system. Then you, what will, you will have to do is provide enough energy that you have to provide some extra energy, let me call it, uh, let's say E0. So you have to provide some extra positive energy to the electron due to which that electron is going to escape the nucleus because that for energy would be, so E0 would be greater than PE. Or you can say that KE, that is kinetic energy plus E0 would be together greater than potential energy, right? So if you provide enough energy, this E0 to the system, then they can become unbounded because that extra energy that you provide will counter the negative potential energy. In fact, what you can do is draw a energy diagram for a diatomic molecule. If you draw the energy diagram for a diatomic molecule, it is going to look something like this. Right. And if you're wondering why we are uh, learning bound systems, certainly while we were studying simple harmonic motion, that is because they have a very deep connection, as you, we are going to soon see. But first, look at this uh, energy diagram of a diatomic molecule. You can see over here that E less than zero means that the two atoms are bounded together. And what if you zoom in into the region that I have circled in red? What if you zoom in into the region? That is going to look something like this, right? And uh, you can easily see from here that if you zoom in into that region, it is approximately a parabola. And what do I mean by parabola? Look at this diagram of a simple harmonic oscillator. Here, the potential energy curve is a parabola. That means that if you zoom in into the minima, right? This is the minima right? over here. This is the minimum. So if you zoom in into that region, that looks like a potential energy curve of a simple harmonic oscillator. Approximately, right? Not really, but approximately. It will become exactly the curve for a simple harmonic oscillator if you displace the uh, system by a very, very small amount. That is here where the two atoms were bound together. If I displace one of the atoms by a very small amount, you might feel that atom is going to escape, but that won't happen. What will happen is that atom will execute simple harmonic motion. In fact, the entire system will execute simple harmonic motion because it will act like a simple harmonic oscillator for small displacement. Now that was how you understand it graphically. But let us see how you can understand the same concept analytically. And that would be made possible by a very powerful tool in physics known as the Taylor series expansion. So we can understand that using Taylor expansion. In Taylor expansion, what uh, you can do is that if you have uh, the potential energy over here, let's say, as a, a function of position, here we have the potential energy as a function of position, right? This one, here we, you can see that the potential energy is a function of position. What you can do is you can expand this as a infinite series, right? This is a function. And what you can do is expand this function as an uh, infinite series. And that series uh, is the Taylor series, right? It is known as the Taylor series. So the Taylor series will look something like this. You will have a constant term plus one upon one factorial r minus r naught du upon dr of r naught plus one upon two factorial r minus r naught du upon d square, right? This will be square of r naught and so on. That means you are going to get uh, terms of which uh, are like this. One upon, it is going to be an infinite sum which we represent by a favorite Greek symbol sigma. So it is going to be an infinite sum from i equal to zero to infinity 
of uh, one upon uh, i factorial r minus r not to the power i di now here di you know what it is it is that order derivative right so di u upon dri at r one so you are going to get a series that looks like that now if you want to approximate what we want here is to approximate this entire curve here we have the potential energy curve for a diatomic molecule right what i'm going to do is i'm going to approximate it to a parabola that is i want to make it look like a simple harmonic oscillator and if i want to do that you know that the parabola is uh, it goes like uh, r square right a parabola is a square function it goes like r square and uh, you can you have seen that for a, a bounded system the potential energy curve is approximately a parabola for small displacements right if i displace the particle by a very very small amount let's say delta r then the potential energy curve of that uh, diatomic molecule is approximately a parabola so what i'm going to do is neglect the terms that is i'm going to ignore the terms beyond this second order because r not is going to be or r minus r not right is going to be very very small and the cube of a very very small number is again a very 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 tiny number so we can just ignore them like they are going to just keep the terms up to the second order that is the square terms as you can see this delta r is going to be nothing but r minus r not and uh, if delta r is very very small then we can just ignore the higher order terms so then what our potential energy curve would uh, look like or what its expression would look like is that u r not right u of r not plus half r minus the uh, r not the whole square d square u upon dr squared at r not now you might have noticed that i have dropped the first order term too and i have done it on purpose i have not missed it out right this term is actually zero and i want you to pause the video for a moment and uh, think it out yourself as to why that term should be zero that term should be zero because we have a minima at r not here at r not we have a minimum and you know that the condition for minima is that at the minima that is here we have the curve for the potential energy so at the minima du upon dr at the minima which is r is obviously going to be equal to zero you know that already and since uh, that is true so we can neglect this term also because this du upon dr over here at r not is zero because r not is a minimum point and hence uh, our potential energy curve i should say approximately would look like this and that's it this is what we were out to derive this is the potential energy curve of a simple harmonic oscillator so this is nothing about the potential energy curve of a simple harmonic oscillator and we got it from a bound system right and uh, that shows that any bound system can be treated as a simple harmonic oscillator uh, approximately because of the presence of this minima over here because that minima was there we could neglect this term you might feel that then we can expand any potential as a taylor series and then neglect the higher order terms but we cannot really do that because we might do that but this term will not be zero this term will be zero only for a bound system because of the presence of this minima over here and that is how a bound system that is even a molecule can act like a simple harmonic oscillator approximately but a good approximation
to motivate me to create more such fun physics videos do not forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video i will see you in the next one with more such interesting and fun concepts of physics thank you for watching